Uh, welcome. Look, this is just a quick uh, tutorial on how to set up an X-Pen graphics tablet. Now, I'm not going to bestow the benefits of having a tablet. Just go to YouTube. Uh, maybe a tablet will help you. Uh, maybe it won't. But uh, for what I do, just edit, editing in Photoshop with my images, I find that it's, I've got a lot more control in the finer areas, um, using masks, um, uh, using, um, you know, con painting contrast, taking contrast out. You can really zoom in and uh, work on those images uh, a lot better. So, as I said, there's there's other other tablets out there. There's the uh, wel Welcome uh, tablets, uh, and I've used Welcome tablets before. They're very good. There's a lot of uh, functionality functionality in those tablets. Uh, but after several years of using the Welcome, I realized I wasn't using uh, really uh, all the functionality of the tablet. So I decided to sell it and went with a uh, just a cheaper uh, tablet, a uh, cheaper um, model. And I went with the, the X-Pen and I brought the Star 640 for under $50. So, so if you're thinking about maybe getting a tablet, um, Look at the X-Pen. Uh, as I said, I'm just going to show you how to set up an X-Pen in Photoshop. Uh, just check that if you, you might not be using Photoshop. You might be using another uh, piece of um, editing software. Make sure that it's compatible with that. And as I said, go on YouTube and just type in the benefits of using a tablet in Photoshop or, or landscape photography for you know, editing images to see if you'll use one. So once you've uh, brought your tablet, just come up and look for your support tab and download your driver. Make sure you've got the right driver. Now, XPen do update their drivers on a regular basis. So just if you're having trouble with your uh, pad, just make sure you've updated your software. And sometimes um, I'll just unplug it for a couple of seconds and then re-plug it in to see if that will sort the problem out. So first your drivers and pull your plug out and put the plug back in to see if that fixes any issues. So let's go and have a look at the software. So XPen or Pen Tablet. So very basic. It's uh, very easy to uh, set up. Uh, the Welcome Tablets, if you've got a lot of dials and buttons, it can take a while to set up. But if you're a professional, you're a graphics designer, that's what you need. Uh, you can go and find the application you're working on. I find it works well um, without finding Photoshop. So it's only two areas, the work area and pen settings. You can see the model number, so star G640. And I'm just going to hit default, set it back to default. Now you can see I have two monitors here. I've got my left monitor and my right monitor. And at this moment, if I use my pen from uh, the left side of the uh, tablet and if I bring her all the way over to my other side and to my other monitor it's probably that pad's probably eight inches wide and I find it's just even the pad's too big and I've got a fairly small pad I don't like dragging my kind of um, wrist or my hand all the way over I just find it's a bit a bit jittery so what I like to do is just use my fingers just like having a pencil in your hand when you're writing something so what I find is you can actually adjust this area um, you can set the area or proportions but I like just to click on the area and just draw left click and draw and let go so I'm only using this part of the pad over two windows so now if I start I can actually come across and write to the monitor and I find even that's even too wide, so I go back to default and just play with it until you feel. So now I just there and I come across. So I'm only using my kind of fingers. Maybe my wrist is not moving off the pad, it's, it's anchored, and I'm just using my fingers right across the other side. So once again, you can go back to default. And left click, drag, and once again. So 
So that's good. So I'll leave it on that for me. I don't touch anything down the bottom here. I go to pin settings and with the X-Pin you've got a top and bottom button and you can customize those buttons down. You can customize that to any uh, shortcut you like. I, I use the control Z, uh, which is going, going back one. So you just and go to customize and it'll bring up this shortcut setting. So what I do is just click on keyboard and hit your keyboard settings. So my backspace or going back one in Photoshop is control Z or control Z. Just do that on your keyboard. It'll pop up here. You can customize the name and write anything you want, but I'll just leave it. You can see the customized name is still control Z, but you could have, you know, backspace or whatever you like. Um, Windows Ink is ticked. And once again, your pressure with your pen, you can play with this. So just if you, if I click on the tablet now, with you can see the current pressure is zero because I've got no pressure on it. But as soon as I touch my, and then I add pressure, push down into the pad. You don't push down hard. You can see my pressure changes. So you can come and play with this. You can go, I just want to come in through softly. Which is quite nice. So we'll leave it there. And let's click OK and save the configuration. Uh, you can import the config, export the config. So if you've set this up, it only takes 30 seconds to set this up. But if you want to export the, what you've done and import it later, um, you can go ahead. I've never used the diagnostic tool. You could use that. Um, but I don't tick any of these off. Okay, so what we'll do is we have to set up Photoshop now and it only takes a couple of seconds in Photoshop. So once you do this a few times, it's quite quick. So what we want to do is come up to uh, I think, yeah, Windows, I haven't done this for a while, and it's brush settings we want. And um, this is my setup. So I've got shape dynamics and control. I want the pen pressure. You want to change it. Okay, so pen pressure. And I've got minimum diameter to 100%. And that's with your diameter or with your brush. I want it to fill that circumference up. You can have it less if you want, but it's up to you. So play around with the minimum diameter. I like it at 100. And that's it for shape dynamics. Transfer, pen pressure, and that's my settings, so zero, zero, zero. Once again, you can play with the minimum if you want, try what it does, and then I've just clicked on smoothing. Okay, and that's it. Pretty straightforward. So we can test this out. We can come up to Photoshop into File. If I can get this back up. File and new and let's just we can just pick up a default size it's on white so let's just go create so we're just a white document now with your make sure your brush is selected and your uh, black is your foreground paint you can hit the d key d for delta to to um sorry x to change it from black to white or if there's another color you've chosen and say so you're thinking oh, i've got to get it back it's, it's actually the uh, d for delta so back to that x to change foreground to background with photoshop so we want black paint and make sure we do have b selected or hit the uh, brush now you can use your left and right bracket keys. So your left bracket key will make your brush smaller and your right bracket key will make it larger. Now you can also hit the Alt key with your pen in and you can actually, if I can remember how to do this, I think it's the bottom. I don't, I use, if you use your, um, hold the Alt key down and use your bottom um, button on your pen and click and just touch the pad, you can, increase and decrease the uh, size of the brush by going uh, left and right and your opacity or your hardness is going up and down so up to 12 o'clock is very soft brush 
and down to six o'clock dragging, your hardness is 100%. So I like a soft brush, so I'm going back to zero. Okay, and as I said before, you can choose your bracket keys up and down. So got up top here, uh, you got opacity and flow. Now, if I go and pick up my mouse <clears throat> and just click and drag, got to change my to black. So just click and drag. You'll notice it's very well. It feels very slow and laggy, and I've got no control. I, I, there's no pressure. It's one hundred percent. So what you have to do is you've got to come up here and start looking for an opacity that you want. You go too down, I need to go lighter, and you can drag. Oh, I still did. So it's very time consuming to try and find the right opacity that you want. Okay, and as I said, it's very laggy. It just seems, yeah, not very nice at all. So let's go Control Z, Control Z, Control Z backspace now let's put that up to 100% and now we'll use the uh, pen so now I'll just just touch and I don't know if you can see it in the video but I'm just slowly and it's very responsive and as I'm adding pressure you can see from virtually hardly anything to Full now you can come over those, take your pen off, put your pen on, take your pen off, and you can actually build that paint up. And that's the benefit of using um, a pen. You can paint in, start off light, and you think that's not enough. I'll just keep clicking off the pad, clicking down, and you can add to that uh, the density of your paint. So look. That's how you set up an X pen. Um, as I said, go to YouTube, seeing if you it would benefit you using a, a pen. Um, I might do a video uh, maybe later on editing an image, maybe using a Dodge and Burn, and showing you the benefits of of that. So, look, thanks for watching.